Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you are having a great day and that you are all doing well. To start things off, Brad Garlinghouse recently spoke about the state of cryptocurrencies and he had a lot to say about exactly who controls Bitcoin. Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, was interviewed by Lee Simpson, Stifle tech analyst during the 2018 Stifle Cross Sector Insight Conference. He said there's a lot of blockchain craziness, uh, but there are market indicators that he thinks are winners. He said blockchain will not disrupt banks. He continued. He said it will play an important role in the way our system works. It is a short sighted view. As explained by the CEO, even that Bitcoin is supported and backed up by blockchain tech, it does not deliver the solutions everybody anticipated it to do which implies that despite that Bitcoin initiated a new and very potential era in technology, there are other cryptos that will be doing the real work. This is where Ripple XRP finds its role. He said, this is how liquidity will be managed in the future. He focused on emerging markets. XRP was described as the best digital asset for settlement. He said, Bitcoin takes 45 minutes to settle a transaction while XRP clears it in only four seconds. Banks will use what is efficient and cheaper, and if you deliver a better product at a better price, they will use it. One interesting story that Mr. Garlinghouse mentioned during the event was that there is not bit or coin in Ripple's name. He said, about two and a half years ago, one of the biggest banks in Australia was in the office. The CEO of the bank said to Garlinghouse, the smartest thing you've done is not have bit or coin in your name. I'll take it. Brad Garlinghouse continued with his opinion that he finds it absurd that many respected and prominent individuals in the tech verse see Bitcoin being the leading currency in the world. He said a number of prominent people, even Steve Wozniak, has said that he sees a world where Bitcoin is the primary currency. He said, I think that's absurd. I don't think that any major economy will allow that to happen. By the way, it doesn't make sense. But what stood out of all when uh, the Ripple CEO took the crowd was an un underreported story, but very important to know on Bitcoin and who controls it. He said, I'll tell you another story that is underreported, but worth mentioning or paying attention to. He said, Bitcoin is really controlled by China. There are four miners in China that control over 50% of Bitcoin. How do we know that China won't intervene? How many countries want to use a Chinese controlled currency it's just not going to happen a lot of other people have said this before in the past um but i feel like brad garlinghouse in particular is trying to ruffle as many feathers as possible like i said there was two three month period where he wasn't in the news at all um he said that he wouldn't be in the news again or wouldn't give any more announcements on ripple or xrp until they had reached a certain threshold of you know their partnerships and stuff like that but recently I don't know if he has become um, a lot more fearless, but he's uh, specifically talking up against Bitcoin. I'm sure you have noticed this as well in the last, that'd be 10 videos, about three times. He's been coming forward and saying a lot of things specifically about the negativity of Bitcoin. But to be fair, like I said before, there are charts online where you can actually see, um, I think it's actually three mining pools that control 51% of all the mining power on Bitcoin. So China does actually control Bitcoin. Um, and this has sparked a number of fears um, going forward because China, like I said before in other videos, likes to have control over things that are in their country. So if at some point they do decide to ban cryptocurrencies or stop cryptocurrencies and, and they decide to take over the mining operations, what they can completely do um what will this then do to bitcoin no one really knows might not even happen but it is so something to think about next up the eu and their whole regulatory uh framework thing is in the news once again an organization established by the european commission to focus on blockchain research and development is soliciting questions from the general public about the nascent technology the EU Blockchain Observatory and Forum announced through a tweet on Monday that it is holding a 90-minute Ask Me Anything session on June 18th to address any concerns from the public about blockchain and the organization's future plan in the emerging space. They say, discover the agenda of our coming um, Ask Me Anything session on blockchain on June 18th at 18 o'clock. They said, ask me questions now using the hashtag AMA blockchain or at EU Blockchain, more information, they have a website there. So if you are in the EU, you can do this. 
The session marks a notable move by the EU's executive arm to educate the public about the basics of blockchain technology and its real-life applications according to the session's agenda listed on the observatory's website. Formally launched in February by the European Commission and Ethereum Startup Consensus, the observatory focuses on developing blockchain-based applications such as for cross-border remittances that can contribute to European single market. The European Commission announced in April that it plans to invest around $400 million in blockchain-related projects over the next two years, anticipating that this technology is going mainstream. Earlier this year, Mario Draghi, head of the European Central Bank, also hosted an online session where he addressed questions posted by the public through Facebook and Twitter that are related to blockchain and cryptocurrency. It's nice to, I don't think anything like this is actually happening in the States. Correct me if I am wrong. Um, you know, I said before in another video exactly what Germany is doing, what Lithuania is doing, what I believe Hungary is doing, and a couple of other countries. I think we also have regula regulatory uh, certainty. I think in the UK, if I'm not 100% mistaken, probably am. Uh, but it's nice to hear, you know, that things these things are happening because I'm sure they, like I said before, countries don't really know exactly what's going on with the cryptocurrency. So it's nice to see that they are at least open to hearing what other people have to say, um, especially people who are into the cryptocurrency space, because a lot of it, I assume, and I know that they don't really understand what the technology is. I was listening to a, um, I was watching a video yesterday. It was in France, and it was obviously in French, and they were talking about the need for blockchain and why we have cryptocurrencies, and there was, like I said before, like a, a relative age gap when you uh, watch the people who were talking. The people who were for it were between the ages of around 25 to 40, so we're floating around there, and the people who were completely against it, who did not understand, were around 65, possibly 70, somewhere around there. Don't know their exact age, but you can tell that they had a lot of questions and they didn't understand. They didn't understand why we needed um, anything decentralized, why people were uncomfortable with having a centralized system as such as the European Central Bank printing out their money. They said, this is how it's always been. Why can't it just remain this way? Um, so it'll be good for them, at least I believe so, for them to hear what the public has to say and why they believe in blockchain and or cryptocurrency tech. Next up, Circle is in the news. Crypto in fintech conference Money Conf in Dublin, Ireland continues today, June 13th, with a live stream from Coin Telegraph available here. If you go to Coin Telegraph, you can watch it. Jeremy Allaire, who is the CEO and co-founder of payment company Circle, spoke this morning of an unprecedented crypto revolution, saying that global society is at the beginning of the tokenization of everything. Just as the early internet transformed data and communications, Blockchain is now poised to revolutionize every aspect of finance and reinvent public and civil services in its own image. He said, once you have an open, global, immutable record keeping system, a transaction processing system, and a secure computing environment, you can reconceptualize on a global basis every aspect of finance, corporate and commercial law, the intermediation of contracts, and crucially, all of these systems we use in both corporate and civic decision making. The CEO outlined a vision of a tokenized global economy and society in which every form of value, storage, and public record keeping becomes a public token that has free-floating market value and can be traded on global digital exchanges. That would be absolutely insane. I know it's hard to even conceptualize or think about that. Think about everything that you own being able to be digitized and you know, uh, even being able to sell fractions of what you own to other people so that they have a stake in what you have as well. It's, it's completely out there. And this is what a lot of people don't understand about the why why we have cryptocurrencies, why we're going to continue to have cryptocurrencies, and why blockchain is so incredibly important because it's going to push us and is pushing us into another world that a lot of people don't realize. They think that the entire cryptocurrency space just relies on the value of these tokens in that, you know, I have a Bitcoin, it's worth 10000 that's great, I can cash it out and I can, you know, Buy a lollipop. I can't think of anything that costs $10,000. Um, like I said, a lot of people don't understand exactly what this is going to do for the world of finance and how this is going to move us away from the system that we've known for the last 200 years. It's going to be absolutely insane. He said, with crypto assets, you can tokenize your house, car, or art and establish open global financial relationships around any physical property. The tokenization of private or public votes in all forms of social governance would offer an immutable system that is more transparent and accountable than current models. 
Alaire outlined five categories of crypto assets, beginning with privacy-focused cryptocurrencies that remove financial activities from the centralized control of governments, which is very important, and serve as a public good on the internet. I won't read through the other five because he kind of it kind of goes on for a bit. Uh, but yeah, this is like I said, a lot of people. Um, this is why I always say, and I'm going to repeat this as many times as I need to, to do your own research. If you have five minutes, just read about what you have your money and read about, listen to podcasts, listen to what is actually happening in the space. So many people are focusing on just the cost of the coins that they have, and they're not, it's literally a drop in the bucket compared to exactly what's going to happen. We're going to have a completely different world when everything is automated, when everything is run by machines, when humans no longer have a, um, are not required to work, which is only about 10 years away, when everything is computerized. Everything will be able to be tokenized as well. Everything will be digital. And this is how people, this is how the world will eventually end up moving towards making money. It's going to be owning digital assets and being able to sell it to other people. Like I said before in another video, now I'm talking really fast. I'm going to try and slow down. I got really hyped. Um, we were talking about being able to own fractional ownership of, um, of cars and stuff like that. Like if you and your friends, five of your friends buy a car, you can all digitize it and have it on a blockchain and then you can rent it out to Uber. If you and all your friends decide to buy a house together and rent it out on Airbnb, you can tokenize this as well. You then own fractional ownerships of this house and whenever someone rents it out on Airbnb, you then all take a share of the profit equally. That's also then recorded on the blockchain so that none of you can ever say, I was cheated out of this money. I did not get this money. You know, my friend did not pay me. Nope, he definitely did this on the blockchain. This is going to completely change the entire world. And I wish more people would read about it because it's actually incredibly fascinating because this is going to be our world in a couple of years. Next up, Stellar Lumens is in the news. This is actually quite cool as well. The world's first cryptocurrency mobile phone network called Yovo chose Malta as its home, which we will be built on the blockchain technology. Being called the blockchain pro nation, Yovo has chosen Malta. The blockchain-based phone network will be completely built on the Stellar network and will be relocated to Malta where they plan to take their project ahead. The phone network will be built on the Stellar blockchain as they believe it is the fastest protocol to build financial products that connect people everywhere. It's just like Ken Foundation and IBM believed in Stellar network, Yovo has its faith in Stellar as well. London-based Yovo Mobile Services allows users to earn and spend cryptocurrencies with more than 500 mobile network partners across 130 countries at the launch. Later on, it will expand from 150 to more than 200 countries within the next 12 months of launch. It will operate with a SIM or a, on a virtual SIM-based network too. In this case, Stellar will be their supporting network technology. I'm very excited for this. I don't know if I'm actually going to use it. To be fair, I have a relatively um, inexpensive uh, phone plan right now. Uh, you guys need to know that. Um, what I'm excited for in phones that's slowly moving forward is things not only built on blockchain, but phones that will be able to mine cryptocurrencies. Um, I think this is going to be a very big thing. We heard a couple day or two ago where Apple had banned crypto miners on their phones. That's fine. I'll definitely get an Android to be able to do that. I'm hoping that they end up moving uh, forward with that a lot quicker because this will completely change the way that blockchain is and how secure all crypto networks will be, especially if you are able to run multiple um, mining softwares on one phone at a time. And no, this, you know, this doesn't say that they'll be able to, you know, mine on this, but I, pr I'm pretty sure most phones are capable of mining cryptocurrencies, but when it's actually built into it and you can just kind of turn it on and flick it on, this will be very interesting to see exactly how the crypto world ends up changing. Next up, Reuters is in the news. Mass media and data giant Thomas Reuters is expanding its cryptocurrency sentiment data toolkit to cover 100 different coins the company announced on Wednesday. Initially launched back in March, 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 the Bitcoin data feed was created in partnership with Market Psych Data LLC. The Thomas Reuters Market Psych Indices Cryptocurrency Sentiment TRMI 3.1 package monitors more than 2,000 global news and 800 social media sites in real time. It gauges sentiments such as excitement or hope to provide insight on investment and reveal market practices patterns using natural language processing combined with machine learning. 
Adding a cryptocurrency focused sentiment tool to our suite of cross asset solutions has enabled us to provide our customers with invaluable insight that may help them make strategic investment decisions, said Pradeep Menon, Thomas Reuters Global Head of Investing and Advisory. Supplemented by quantitative analysis, TRMI 3.1 uses a host of additional tools developed by behavioral economists at MarketSite to identify influential themes and more rapidly develop actionable strategies, according to the firm. I think they're the, I want to say the second one who've developed something like this. There was another firm a couple of months ago. I don't remember exactly. I can't remember the name anymore. There's so many people who are making these technologies in order to help people understand what's going on there was like a, a like a fear gauge it, w- it was something very similar to this to, to allow people to know exactly how the rest of the market was feeling um i can only imagine what the gauge is right now i'm sure it's like in complete panic mode um there was another news article that came out when ethereum dropped below 500 and it was literally just a photo of a car that was burning and i sent it to my friend and i was like that's pretty accurate for exactly what's going on right now uh, so I'm pretty sure a lot of the um, data for, you know, whether the market is excited or hopeful is probably off its wagon right now. Next up, um, this is actually quite interesting and I actually didn't expect anything like this to happen, but it seems completely logical that it would take place. Rating agencies may downgrade banks that clear Bitcoin futures if these financial products continue to see increasing volume over the coming months. Financial publication Risk.net reports that each of the three large rating agencies, the S&P 500, Moody's, and Fitch, have expressed concern over increasing volume in Bitcoin futures markets, which are currently available, available, available on regulated U.S. exchanges, CME and CBOE. As CCN reported... Volume in these markets has grown steadily since their December launch, and combined futures trading volume has exceeded $670 million during a single trading session. This increasing volume has helped lend legitimacy to the asset class, but it has rating agencies worried that banks are taking on unnecessary risk right While still too low to be a major concern, rating agencies said that due to the volatility of the Bitcoin price, they may downgrade the credit worthiness of banks who clear Bitcoin futures for their clients. They said the impact on ratings is something that we think is perhaps not fully appreciated by the market and something that warrants monitoring going forward, said Nathan Flanders, global head of non-bank financial institution at Fitch Ratings. He said if the notional maternality increases... That is going to increase our dialogue with the banks. He added, for banks, even though they are saying they are not directly engaging in the trading of cryptocurrencies that clearly members, they have some indirect exposure to it, whether they like it or not. Rating agencies assign credit ratings or letter grades to banks to gauge the risk that they will default on their debts. Banks whose ratings are downgraded may have a more difficult time obtaining access to funding and may also face higher collateral requirements limiting the amount of credit they can extend to their clients. The hostile view towards Bitcoin futures is not isolated to Fitch. Anna Arsov, managing director at Moody's, said that it will consider a Bitcoin futures clearing operation a a credit negative when deciding on a bank's rating, though that risk is not currently large enough to have a material impact. So like I said, I didn't see this coming, but it makes a lot of sense. They're trying to make sure or to get banks and credit institutions away from even touching Bitcoin. They said even though they're not directly engaging with it, that there's still kind of um, a bit of exposure to it. Um, this is it's very interesting to see how much uh, people, not that they're still fighting it, they're, they're going to continue fighting it, but um, that you have to now scare any institution or any person who is even touching cryptocurrencies. There was another news article that I also don't have in this video that came out a day ago. Um, I can't remember. It was some, not a low class bank. It was a bank that you definitely see when you walk around. Um, uh, but they also stopped people from using credit cards. And I think they also banned purchases with, of of crypto or something like that. So you can tell that they're trying to squeeze any way to get people to stop being able to use this. But if you look hard enough, there are definitely other banks that you can, um, use in order to buy cryptocurrencies, but they're trying to make sure that this doesn't spread. I want to say, but they are 
kind of behind in a way um this technology it, i i don't think that people are going to be deterred i think they already know that a lot of other companies and other banks and or credit rating agencies are going to continue to try to not shut them down but give them like you know like a bit of a finger wag to tell them not to do it but there's so much money to be made in this space and i don't think it's gonna like it's not gonna stop anytime soon but it's always interesting to note uh that the people behind the glass the people who we just don't see are constantly trying to make sure uh that nothing about cryptocurrencies can continue forward because they didn't look at it for so long it was it was just a complete joke to them and now that it's taking over the world they're trying their hardest to um downgrade people and companies who are even trying to think of getting into using the technology last up tim draper is once again in the news billionaire investor and longtime bitcoin bull tim draper sat down for an interview with the street to discuss his thoughts on the future of bitcoin and cryptocurrencies the conversation started off right off the issue of clarity with the street asking Draper for his reaction to what former chairman of the Commodities and Futures Trading Commission, the CFTC, Gary Gensler, said about the need for regulation on cryptocurrencies. Draper answered that all the governments in the world are now in competition to attract crypto and blockchain-based technology companies, and in order to do that, they would need to create a very clear and light-touch regulations for crypto. Like I said, interesting to note, Three or four years ago, they did not want to even touch cryptocurrencies. And now we've seen about 10 different countries, at least, come forward, giving rulings and regulations saying, you know, this is definitely, you know, a good place for people to come to spend their crypto and or do what they want to build crypto here. Like, it's very interesting to note how the tide has shifted. When asked what his approach would be if, if asked by President Donald Trump in the White House in order to draft crypto policy... Draper answered that the first thing he would do would be to make Bitcoin a national currency as Japan has. Can you imagine if Bitcoin was a national currency in the States? Then continuing with his comment about creating a light touch, he would suggest creating a new department outside of the SEC and CFTC to oversee cryptocurrency. Haha. <laughs> Adding that cryptocurrencies are currency unless they are tethered to fiat. He said... I just spoke to the people at the Federal Reserve recently. I felt I should tell them that they should start looking for a new job. Not immediately, but over the next 10 years. I suspect we will have less need for centralized currency. As the interview switched gears to security, the investor said that banks are becoming less secure in contrast to a blockchain network, which becomes more secure as the number of wallet holders, stakeholders, and miners increase. And in that case, Bitcoin, as the most popular, is the most secure of the cryptocurrencies. Draper made the prediction that price-wise, we'll continue to see Bitcoin move higher. I've revised my estimate up to $250,000 four years out. So we'll see Bitcoin trade around a quarter of a million dollars in around four years. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Tim Draper was one of the people who said it would be quarter of a million in like two years. I guess the uh, the market going down has gotten to him as well. But this does not bode very well for Mr. McAfee, who uh, is still certain that we're going to hit a million by the end of 2020. Only time will tell. None of us think we would have gotten this far two or three years ago. So let's see exactly where the cryptocurrency market is. Um, but I, still, I, I believe in what he said as well. I think that there needs to be a some type of a crypto policy in every single country that's built by people who are into cryptocurrencies. I don't care if they're rich. I don't care if they're poor. I think it needs to be built by them and for us uh, because they know exactly what's going on. Uh, but how nice would it be if Bitcoin became a national currency in the US? The price would completely lose its mind. Alrighty, everyone. That is definitely going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys... Um, Almost said enjoy it again. Hope you guys have a great day, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Thank you once again for watching. I appreciate all the support. And I will talk to you all soon. See you.